Hello, hello, this is Jen. I hope everybody's good. Thank you for being here. Welcome if you're new. Welcome back if you're not new. Thank you for being here. It's the middle of February. I'm here with an energy update, general energies and the twin flames. So much has been going on and happening and so much more is about to happen. We are in a crucial phase right now of being tested, trying to keep our balance, trying to make sense of everything. We are basically integrating a lot of new cosmic or universal energies into our physical reality. What does that mean is if we take the, the sentence as above so below it starts above in the universe in the cosmos and it works its way down to the physical and that's where we integrate so in order for things to start in the cosmos on a spiritual level it starts with one thought it starts with one intention it starts with one desire and then to work its way down to the physical it depends what you do. Nourishing that intention, that thought, that desire with love is what will propel it downwards to the physical to come manifest in your physical reality. No matter if you're a twin flame or not, at this point of the game, in 2019, we are integrating those new energies of the new earth. We are integrating those new perceptions, way of thinking, perceptions, I know I said that, thought patterns, uh, that's what I wanted to say, thought patterns, and we are integrating really the new earth. I'm sure a lot of people are feeling this already. Um, or you're about to if you're not feeling it yet. You're about to, and it's a real game changer, a really big one. And it comes with a lot of tests. They are being tested on every level, in every way possible. And that's okay, because that's part of life. We're always tested to see if we learned the lesson right, to see if we still have more work to do. And it's not about failing. It's not about uh, passing the test either. It's about the lesson. So in order to pass the test, you need to understand the lesson and to make sure it doesn't come back. Because a lesson that hasn't been learned will come back. And those tests, they show up in different ways as triggers, and it's your reaction to the triggers that will make the difference. A trigger could be anything. Someone saying something and you suddenly feel angry. Someone saying something and you feel that pinch right in the middle of your body, in the solar plexus, in the heart, or in the back. You know, like knives in the back or needles on the skin. And you don't necessarily understand why you've been triggered like that. That's the first sign that you have work to do. That's the first sign that you need to release some stuff. And it's not the word on word that the person said that you need to look at, but the way it makes you feel and why it makes you feel this way. What lack is it trying to bring to the surface for you to understand that you have a lack and you need to work on it to release it? to fill it with something positive, to fill it with healing energies. When being triggered, there's always two choices available to us, love or fear. And if you choose anything in the fear department, you're gonna run away, you're gonna deny, you're gonna be in your ego, you're gonna say things like, no, no, I don't do that. I don't get it, but I don't get it, I don't understand. And if you choose love, you remain calm and you're just able to say, hmm, 
I'm being triggered right now, but I don't understand why I shall figure it out. And in order to figure it out, the only thing you can do is not be so close to it. Detach from the energy of that trigger and try to make sense of it of how it makes you feel because sometimes we get triggered and we don't know how we feel we just feel uneasy but we're not able to pinpoint am i angry does it make me feel anxious does it make me feel scared does it make me feel less than once we figured that step one we can figure a step two which is why do i feel this way what what is it trying to show me and what do I need to do to release it and switch it around and shift it? So understanding the how we feel and the why we feel this way. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, I feel this way because my mother or my friend did that to me once. And sure, if you work this way, go right into that path and find all those answers, bring the puzzle, all together, make the puzzles and figure it out in order for you to release it and move on and move forward. And once you've understood why you feel this way, you need to change it so that the next time around that that same trigger comes back to you, that you react differently. We're human and we will be triggered for the rest of our lives. Only monks and Buddhas that meditate all day, don't get triggered. And even then, I'm pretty sure they do. It's just that they have this self-mastery system that it doesn't affect them. And if we could all work towards that level of self-mastery, we would live on a better planet, in a better society with more love, with more compassion towards one another. So when those triggers show up, understanding the entire process behind that trigger and inside of you is what will help you release it. Once that's done, keeping the balance is really important. So that's where we are now in terms of integrating these new energies. We are trying to keep the balance and this is a hard phase because it's the marathon phase. It's not a sprint. We've been, you know, in this marathon for quite a while for some. Uh, for the new, newly awakened, it, it's just new stuff and you may not be able to understand what's going on at this point. You will. You will. The faster you um, focus on your internal life in your own internal process, the faster you're going to see results in your life and externally. So being in this marathon of trying to keep the balance, it's easy to get tired. It's easy to lose focus. It's easy to feel like, oh, I give up. I want to give up. Best thing to do is as soon as you catch yourself thinking this way, change it around right away. Stop it right there in this track and replace it by positive thinking, affirmations, or feeling. Saying, no, I'm not feeling this way. I am feeling this way. And it's not instant. You may be feeling or being pulled towards that negative thought or energy. As long as you work your way out of it, that's what matters. Even if it takes a few hours, even if it takes a couple of days, what matters is that you keep on trying. So you can picture it this way. At this point, it's as if we're all standing on one leg and we need to stand on that same leg until it's time to use both of our legs. So it's hard work. We're going to get tired, and I'm not saying this to be negative in any way. It's just this is what's happening right now, and it's going to happen until March. Somewhere in March, 
And it's going to feel like things are slowing down. It's going to feel like, oh my God, I, I've been through this phase of at the beginning of the year where I was feeling like I was being pushed forward. And now you're going to feel like this slow process trying to work its way into your life. Accept it. Allow it. That's the only thing to do. Surrender. So that's also a test. We're being tested on her, our capability to surrendering to what is. In surrender, we are able to find clarity that we cannot find if we run away, if we deny, if we deflect, or if we, if we fight against it. Sorry, it seems I have a hard time speaking again. That's not new. Um, so by surrendering, we are able to see our divine truth. By surrendering, we trust in the higher intelligence, in the intelligence of the universe, in the intelligence of the unified field. Therefore, in your own intelligence, emotional, mental, physical, in your own abilities to manifest what you want to see come true in your life. It starts with you. It starts with us and what we put in into the unified field. So that's why those tests and those triggers are really important at this time. And Resistance is not an option whatsoever. You can try it. If you choose to resist, you're going to instantly run into an obstacle that will remind you that you need to be back on track. So why not do it by yourself instead of having to run into obstacles? Um, As far as the twin flames, a lot of, I'm going to call it divine intervention, but I don't like to use the word divine because to me it's the universe. Um, a lot of cosmic energies and universal energies were at play and at work in the twin flame connections. No matter what your status is at this point if you've met your twin if you're in union with your twin if you're not in union and not speaking a lot of new energies showed up into both the masculine and feminine energies of the connection flushing away old stuff so if for example you are in a connection and haven't been speaking with your twin for a while, or if things happened, uh, if you two got into a fight or a misunderstanding and never spoke since, or you've been blocked on social media, these things are about to change. I don't know when, but they're about to change. The two people involved in this twin flame connection have been guided to let go and release of everything that, it, that was creating or is creating interference or resistance. So whatever that means for your own connection, whatever that means for your own life, I'm sure you are feeling it. You are feeling that change in yourself, in those perception. Perhaps you're able to see the past situations with your twin Differently, you feel less angry, you feel less um, left alone or abandoned. That's a great sign that you've been doing a lot of work. So if you're feeling that, your twin is feeling the same. Less angry, maybe for different reasons, but with the same emotion. Your twin is feeling the same. So huge interventions and changes and shifts have been happening with the divine masculine, like tremendous, like, like I've never seen before. They've been stripped away of their wrongful thinking. Those dogmas and paradigms of I'm a man and I'm referring to the divine masculine in the masculine body 
or even the divine masculine in a feminine body it depends which energy you have you embody physically but those old rigid ways of thinking are being stripped away and that's a very good reason to be happy because the society and the world needed that those old ways of thinking of I'm a man and men don't cry men are not sensitive men are the breadwinners and all that stuff that was made up by I don't know who along the way are slowly going away and it goes for the divine ma uh, feminine as well those old ways of thinking that a woman should be this and a woman should be that no it's God it doesn't matter who you are physically what matters is that you're happy and you embody your divinity and you you are who you want to be that's what matters and that can only happen by speaking your truth so the divine masculine is stepping up a few notches into speaking their truth some of them are working really really hard into trying to find ways way back to their divine feminine seeing their mistakes seeing where they were wrong seeing how they need to apologize maybe for a few things or not every connection is different but seeing how their feminine that person is their person their perfect partner they're seeing that 2019 is the year of the twin flame the divine partners the higher love divine love so at this point twin flame or not doesn't really matter which label we use anyway so many people got into that label too much that they they got like attached to a relationship that they thought it was a twin flame connection when it wasn't this is gone as well so huge cleanup has happened and now if in this connection you are the one called the chaser or trying to make your the other person come back you should feel more in balance at this point and you're being tested and how you can hold that balance and you're being triggered and tested on your reactions towards that connection to see if you're ready to move forward to the next level and there is no instruction books when it comes to relationships or human beings everybody's different everybody has a different amount of steps to take to reach their goals, to reach their desired goals. So huge progress there, amazing progress there. So feeling a lot of gratitude is a really good idea for the rest of the month and for the upcoming, upcoming months. We're not too far from spring. Spring is going to change a lot of things too. So from now until spring, it's going to feel like things are slowing down and it's really a time to rest, nest, and clean up your house, your emotional house, physical house. Change your stuff around, change your energy and guard it. Guard your energy. Don't share it. Put up your boundaries. You're going to be tested when it comes to boundaries to see how sturdy you are in your own truth. You're going to be tested when you speak your truth as well. That's okay. These people who are trying to break you or get to you, they don't do this to you. They do this to themselves. Forgive them and move on. And having the intention that these people see their truth is a really good way to help. Also asking for your soul family to show up to meet more people in your soul family is a good idea. That's about to happen to a lot of people. 
as well in the upcoming months. If you feel like you have this weight on your shoulder of being a fighter, a warrior, it's about to end. And you may feel it already, like things are lighter. You feel more people are awakened, therefore the load is being redistributed differently. The old days are gone. The old days of I have to go through a bunch of ordeals or problems in order to break the barriers, they're gone. So for the, those people who identify as being a first waiver and all that stuff, all those labels, because to me they're all labels and it doesn't matter where you are, what matters is what you do and the work that you do. All of this is about to change. The overall daily energies are sweeter, softer, lighter, because so much density has been cleared. Our nervous system has been in overtime for the past few weeks, still is, but it should feel less draining. Our nervous system has been upgraded, upgraded a whole lot. And usually that shows up as physical symptoms, the itching, the eye twitching, the, oh my God, I can't stand my shirt because it's itching all over when you usually are able to wear that shirt. It shows up as having a hard time sleeping, dreaming crazy dreams. That's changing. Talking about dreams. Last week was big, big for dreams. A lot of people should, should have received a lot of information regarding their path or their mission or their twin flame connection. And the kind of dream where you wake up and you're like, oh my God, it feels like I've been there for real. Not, oh my God, what was that? But more like, oh my God, it feels like I'm coming back from this destination or it feels like I, it was real. That's usually a sign that it was a clear message sent to you. And if you're in a twin flame connection, it was sent to your twin as well. So a lot of twins have been receiving more information on their own personal mission and the twin flame mission. And at this point, it doesn't matter if you are with your twin flame or not. What matters is that you do your own mission. You focus on your thing. Let go of the, the rest. It doesn't matter. It's never going to happen to happen if you don't focus on yourself and if you don't work on yourself. But last week, the dream time was very rich in messages, in learning, in going to school, and in receiving a lot of downloads while sleeping. And perhaps you're that kind of person who, are, who is receiving downloads all day long very few people are like that because that's demanding. It's very draining for the nervous system to be like that because usually these are the mo mo most sensitive people and it's kind of hard to be this way because we can be like uh, on overload very easily and very often. That's what it felt like for the past couple of weeks. That's all changing slowly. And nicely. Um, other than that, yeah, if I go back to the Divine Masculine, they are working so super hard into reaching the next level, healing, 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 healing. A lot of inner child healing has been happening in the past week also towards the Divine Masculine. You may have felt that as well by remembering stuff from your childhood that didn't make sense at that time and still didn't. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's why I was doing that. You know, things, perhaps behaviors or like small stuff that you used to do as a kid, but that you couldn't understand why you were doing that. Now 
it's probably more clear to you why. That has happened last week. They are also being guided into following their intuition. They cannot resist this anymore. Any longer, they cannot. They are sent a bunch of synchronicities. It's almost getting ridiculous the amount of synchronicity that is being sent toward the towards the divine masculine, towards everyone, but especially the divine masculine. It's ridiculous. It's like a non-stop thing. If it's not numbers, it's a sign, a word, uh, something to make they, them think about their divine feminine so that they could come home in union to themselves first, and that's in progress, and then come home to their divine masculine in union, to their divine feminine, sorry, in union with their twin flame. It is, again, 2019, the year of the twin flame, and the year of relationship. If we look back in 2017, started it started in 2015, and all the way to 2017, it was the years of the breakups. Everybody was breaking up. Everybody was being let go. Everybody, anybody who was not with the right partner got split up. And now in 2019, it's time to these right partners to find each other and be together and embody this higher love, this unconditional love and be pillars of lights for the world and to help other people heal. And at this point, you don't need to be a psychic, a medium, a clairvoyant, a shaman, or a Reiki practitioner to heal people. At this point, enough work has been done and so much negative energies and density has been cleared that just by being you, you are helping people around you. And there is no reason at this point for not being happy all the time, for not smiling. There is no reason. Go out there and smile. Go out there and shine bright. Stand tall and shine bright so that that light can be reaching other people, can have this ripple effect and reach as far as possible. At this point, there is no need to learn specific techniques to do this and to clear that and to... No, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you do your work and that you shine your light. That's all. If you do have those techniques or do want to learn them, go for it. That's awesome. But at this point, enough people are or have learned or know how to work with the energies they are healers and they don't need to give a treatment to someone to heal them they can just be in their presence and the healing is gonna happen in the background you can try it today you're gonna see it's a very cool experience people you will notice how people react when they see you and how perhaps you're changing the vibe of an entire room when you walk in that's what it feels like or people just turn their heads when they see you because they're like attracted to you and they don't really understand why it's not a physical thing it's energies it's vibrations frequencies and we all feel that whether we are awakened or not we all feel it it's just some people are not aware that they feel that or feel this way and they can't make sense of what's happening but for those who do and for those who understand what what's happening it's the bomb it's amazing so at this point everybody's walking towards that level of being light in a childlike state of mind being bubbly being happy you know some people call this um uh, breaking up with the matrix disconnecting from the matrix and it, it's true it makes sense when you do your own thing when you're happy no matter what when you don't feel a slave to 
someone else, a slave to a system, that's where you're truly free. And that can only happen and come through the amount of work that you've been doing. So that's it for now. And you can visit my Facebook page at Indigo Girls Readings. Send me an email, indigogirl555 at gmail.com or visit my Instagram at indigogirl555. And until next time, be well. <laughs>